Um, art is my tool for today's topic, and as I was meeting with the organizers for the event and sharing why I felt so connected to this year's theme, um, they actually pulled out a card which they gave me because someone has already said it better than I could. In order to heal, we need to tell our stories and have them witnessed. The story itself becomes a vessel that holds us up, that sustains, that allows us to order our jumbled experiences into meaning. As I told my stories of fear, awakening, struggle, and transformation, and had them received, heard, and validated by other women, I found healing. That's Sumunk Kid. Yeah. So there are many ways to tell our stories, and for me, art has a way of making things easier for people to receive and, and process. Um, so I create conceptual art, mixed media, and I'm here today to speak about my, my process. So I'm gonna go into some pretty words about my philosophy behind it, and, and then we'll show some images. But my artist statement always begins with radically vulnerable art for transformative dialogue. Um, I work with participants, bringing them in. I know art is kind of seen as like an artist alone in the dark, painting away, um, blind to the world maybe, but for me, I bring in people, and I let them share their stories, their narratives, their truths, um, and we unpack things together, usually surrounding a theme. And I take it as they bring it, and through that, art is created. So I, I view both the resulting work and the process as a tool for a constructive conversation and a moving experience. Human beings are vessels of memory, emotion, adaptation, experience, all pushing forward manifesting into unique beings that can talk and touch and share. Um, I find that extraordinary. And I've said before, that, that phase when babies can finally find themselves in the mirror and they go, oh wow, what the heck is that? I never really got over that phase. <laughs> Hannah can say she saw me back, back there in the mirror like doing weird things, but um, I'm driven to listen instead of creating from only my own perspective, because as this quote mentions, the more I was able to express my story in a healthy way, the more I realized um, that that connection that we are so often robbed of is everything. Uh, for me, that is grace. Our society is not set up for us to really enjoy ourselves or one another, I, I believe. The wisdom that experience can bring comes second to productivity, keeping up appearances, um, and not seeming like we're too much, right? Thank you. Um, but women, women are often championed for these same traits of tolerance, listening, empathy, patience, investment, and protection, and the strength and the power to be all of those things at once. Um, in a college class in conceptual art, we were looking at a piece that was really dynamic and we were trying to piece together why we were so drawn from it, to it because it's not necessarily a beautiful piece. And I said, kind of muttering in the back to myself, didn't think anyone would hear me, I said, people crave the delicate, but we ignore it every day. People crave the delicate, but we ignore it every day. Especially in this age of instant communication, people feel compelled to push their stories, their thoughts, their emotions, their drama, everything out through a keyboard. Um, but we get uncomfortable when given that same opportunity to be transparent in person. <laughs> As Sue Monk Kidd said, we are searching to make sense, to be validated, and to heal. To ignore our soft spots, our delicate, sensitive, calling truths and experiences is to ignore the birthplace of growth and wisdom. Many religions speak on those feminine traits for healing, balance, understanding, and redemption. But it's hard to make the space in these times to really live in that truth, to take that moment. We're so used to going through the motions that even when we get a moment of pause, it's hard to find our ways back to ourselves and to each other. Um, so in my workshops and in my art, I create to remind and to provide that space, um, to carve space for the participants of my work to feel and share safely and freely, 
and to come from what is moving within them. How many people follow Humans of New York, the photography page? Yeah? <laughs> well, that's, that's why, right? For that truth and connection and authenticity. So I work to give people an experience around that feeling. I listen, I create, I share, and then hopefully others will come and see and hear and listen. Radically vulnerable art for transformative dialogue. And I want to show some of my work now. That's me. I started, uh, I started, I really got into art from the need to unpack my, my own conflict, inner conflict, and that's what that looks like. That first picture is how I unravel myself now, and it's much brighter, much more vibrant, you know, much more approachable. But that's how I felt at the time. And one of the themes that's going to be in the festival is finding the wisdom in those dark places, and, and that's where I was. Um, and people responded really well to these prints, not the same way they responded to me when the conflict was spilling out in frustration or... So that's when I started to understand how powerful art was as a tool for listening and sharing and for opening up dialogue about the things that we really need to talk about. It's called Inside Out. And then, so, so when I came back to Louisville in this current political climate, I decided to make a work of art called The Divided States of Americans. Um, and it's because right now political rhetoric is being used to take certain identities and make them into, twist them into an agenda, basically. Uh, so I allowed people, I invited people, I didn't allow them, to come and reclaim their identity. So on the left, it says they say, what they say about me. And on the right, it says I am, what I know. And this is another work. I went to Hanover College. Um, and it's pretty small. And uh, people come from different places, and they're recruited, and they come to the college for different reasons. And they kind of stay divided and separated. And I wanted to soften those barriers. So I asked 100 students many that I had never met before, um, and some challenged me a lot on the idea, but a uh, hundred students, their photos on a wall, and people could come, and maybe someone they would have never talked to, unfold their photo, and see some, an introduction to them, their biggest strength and their biggest weakness from their own words. And the photos were taken as they were describing this, so you got to see them in that moment of self-reflection, a moment we don't typically get to see about people in public. Okay. One says procrastinator, self-critical, inability to be friendly, too talkative, um, neurotic. This is a, another work that I'm still currently working on. It's called What the Dark Knows. Um, I was really touched by Hannah's story because this was, this came from the feeling that Black people from the African diaspora are often, uh, the gifts are pushed to the dark and, and the problematic things are, are, are pushed to the light. And even when the gifts are given light, it's, it's not always through our lens. Um, so I invited people to come and with just a flashlight shining on them to share their experience. And, and they wore something that made them feel powerful and beautiful in their, in their dark skin and they would just talk about it. And I got to see them, like, kind of like a, uh, what's the bird, the, the feather is a, uh, somebody, peacock. When a peacock is strutting, you got to see that pride really come out um, in their ownership, you know. And, and this is what came from that. And I was in the dark, you know, actually taking the photo. So it was, it was like I wasn't even there. It's kind of like this, actually, with the spotlight and everybody else's. <laughs> Yeah. 